Hello, my name's Neil Dardis. I'm Chief Executive of Frimley Health Foundation Trust. I'm delighted to be with you celebrating the 70th birthday of the NHS. I'm so proud and privileged to be a part of the NHS. It's a key part of our society and one of our most loved institutions. And it's loved because of its three principles, being free at the point of care, being universal, open to everyone, and being based on clinical need, not ability to pay. And that's so important for us. Now, as many of you will know, I started in the NHS 20 years ago. My first job was as a medical records clerk. And if I think back now to what my day was like then, it's very different to what that role would be today. I used to start my day phoning out patients, from a landline I should add, to find out what patients had been added to the clinic for that day and where I'd need to find their medical records. I'd then visit various departments, carrying off from multiple volumes of very thick notes uh, around the hospital. And if you think about that today now, most of our records are digitalised and there's these little pocket devices called mobile phones, which many people use for communication and some organisations even using to record and access those medical records. So all that has changed in just 20 years. So it really is astounding and astonishing to think what more change will there be in the next 20 years or even the next 70 years. And of course, so much else has changed in the NHS over the last 70 years. And here's a few statistics. Back in 1948, the budget was 430 million. Now it's 110 billion. The death to births ratio was 34 to 1,000 births in 1948. Now it's 3.8 deaths for every 1,000 births. That's staggering improvements in care. The first hip replacement was in 1962, um, and we now do 77,000 of those. And the first test tube baby was in 1978, and now we have 20,000 births supported by IVF treatment. Of course, polio and diphtheria were massive killers back then, killing thousands, largely eradicated through vaccination programmes now. And of course, we now have the breast screening service, which was begun in 1988, which saves over a quarter of a million lives each and every year. So it's those astonishing achievements and that place in our society that makes me feel really proud and privileged to be a part of that NHS this week. But of course, it's also poignant for me because it's the end of my first 100 days here as Chief Executive at Frimley Health, and it's been a fantastic 100 days. You might remember I set myself the challenge, the challenge of meeting as many staff as possible, really getting to listen and understand and understand the, what's special about our services, and also understand your challenges and your aspirations for the future. So in those 100 days, I've met over 2,500 staff, I spent over 120 hours visiting some of our clinical departments and unfortunately I've had over 430 meetings so spending a lot of time really getting to know our services and I am so proud to be a part of this organisation and this team and there's much that you should be proud of as well. We deliver some of the best cancer waiting times in the entire NHS. We've got fantastic new facilities such as the women's unit at Wexham Park and state-of-the-art facilities coming in the future with the new emergency department at Wexham, the new hospital at Heatherwood, and the new inpatient and diagnostic facility at Frimley Park. We're seeing fantastic improvements in services, such as the renal service uh, at the Frimley end. And of course, we've seen us being a pioneer in terms of our system work, leading the way in joining up care with our partners. We've also seen great improvements in some of the other models of care, developments of ambulatory care models and a new frailty model to really change the way we deliver care for our patients. And I've seen a huge amount of pride and support amongst all of our staff supporting and valuing each other, which is why we have some of the best staff engagement scores in the country. We've also seen an award-winning volunteer service, improvements in our patient experience scores and some of the best mortality indicators in the country. So those are some, just some of the phenomenal achievements I've seen and I've been so overwhelmed with the fantastic care that you deliver for our patients each and every day. And I think one of the things that's really struck me is the pride and the passion amongst our community for our services, be they hospital services and our community services. This really matters to our local people and our local communities and I've seen that they cherish these organisations um, and these hospitals and this, these services that we provide and that's really important for us as well. So I'm incredibly proud of what we've achieved and we've got to hold on to all the fantastic qualities we have in our organisation to make sure we maintain those in the future. But I've also heard and listened to some of your frustrations and some of your anxieties about the future. We know the challenges facing the NHS on a national basis. 
More people are leading healthy lives and yet demand on the NHS is increasing ever more. We know that quality of care is improving pretty much by any standard, but there's far more focus when we get it wrong, understandably so and rightly so. And we know that the NHS employs more staff than it ever has in its history, and yet our staff has never felt under as much pressure as we do now. And I've heard some of your anxieties very much linked to those. Anxieties about the funding of the future. I'm really pleased with the financial settlement that the NHS has received, a 3.4%, but we also know that's not as much as we've had over the last 70 years and not as much as many think we need to deliver the sorts of care we want to in the future. And we know we have those financial challenges within our own organisation. When we came together from two trusts to one, we had a £31 million deficit. That underlying deficit is now £26 million, so we've still got a significant amount of that work to tackle. I've also heard a lot of frustrations around some of our operational challenges. A really long, tough winter where we've often had to treat patients in ward environments that aren't the best and deliver care that we're not happy with. And it's really important that we tackle some of those and enable our staff to deliver the sorts of care they want to deliver. I've heard frustrations about making it easier to get things done, about how bureaucratic we can be and how people just don't have the time that they want to be able to do their jobs properly. And I've heard a lot of frustrations around the pace of change and how we can move further faster and how we join up care for the communities that we serve. So it's really important to me that we hold on to what is fantastic here at Frimley Health and we use all those great qualities that we have to deliver all that fantastic care to meet our vision for the future. But if we're going to tackle some of those challenges and some of those anxieties, there's six things that we we'll need to do differently to make sure we're outstanding. Outstanding now, outstanding in 10 years and outstanding in the, in the next 70 years of the NHS. So those six things I want to talk to you more about are linked very much to our values. Firstly, in terms of our value of facing the future, we need to have a very clear plan. What does our organisation look like over the next five to 10 years? How do we change? What will we be known for over that time? And secondly, how can we go further faster in joining up care with our partners to provide a better care for our patients? and truly make the NHS a service focused on health and well-being and less on sickness and illness. In terms of our second values around being committed to excellence, how do we go further in becoming One Frimley Health, one organisation that offers the best care for patients wherever they are accessed? And secondly, how do we make sure that we deliver in a consistent way? How do we listen? How do we learn and how do we deliver change in our organisation that supports our staff and our patients? In terms of our third value, working together. How do we make sure we invest in our leaders so that our leaders are supported to be the best they can be and they support their teams to make, enable them to deliver the improvements they want to make? And how do we make sure we have a very consistent workforce plan for the future, one that's got new innovative roles provides great exciting career development opportunities, links to research and academia, and makes Frimley Health the best employer it can be, where staff are truly valued and recognised for the fantastic work that they do. So I want to continue some conversations over the coming weeks around how we move forward and those six key themes. How can you be involved and how can we work together to make Frimley Health outstanding for the future? But I also think there's some improvements we can make in the short term, over the next three months. So firstly, we need to be very clear about our priorities. I know our teams are working really hard to develop new plans and new pathways around capacity and flow, and I want to see those in place before the winter that's coming. We know this year is going to be a tough year financially, but I've seen a huge number of ideas and support for how we'll tackle that together, and I want to make sure we land those financial numbers. And thirdly, we need to be as best as we can be and show how outstanding we are the next time the Care Quality Commission visit us. A second priority for us is how do we create more space and time for people? I think we can significantly reduce meetings in this organisation. I put a challenge to all of our teams to reduce meetings by 30%. I also have heard that there's a lot of frustration around the use of email. And I think there's work we can do to reduce the burden of email over the next couple of months. And I think there's more we can do to support people to work on a cross-site basis. You don't have to travel 25 miles to go to a meeting. We can support with technology and new ways of working. One of the frustrations I heard was around getting things done, and I want to support changes in that. So we're going to set up a Chief Executives Fund, a modest fund, 
where you'll be able to make bids in a Dragon's Den uh, star way uh, to enable to get small amounts of funding that you know will improve care for patients or the well-being of your staff. Similarly, I want to work with frontline staff to develop rapid action teams so that we put the power back to you to design our processes and our services and I want to support you with some of those changes. And thirdly, I want us to review the way we do change here, particularly IT change, where we can support each other to make sure it's far more effective for the future. Fourthly, I want to make improvements around visibility, particularly of senior leaders. I want to continue the work that we've done over those 100 days, continue our coffee sessions, continue our visibility, have far more open staff sessions and focus groups so that we remain really engaged and understand the challenges that you face each and every day and that we're strongly connected with our patients. And I also want to leak a back to the floor scheme for all of our senior leaders so that again we remain really close to you, our staff and our patients. Lastly, I think we can do far more to say thank you. Thank you for all the great work each and every one of our staff does each and every day. You'll be seeing the faces of Frimley shortly. These are our staff awards winners from last week and we want to celebrate their work and value all the great work that they do. I also want to hold more regular awards, not just annual awards, but monthly awards, linked to the staff briefings and our board meetings where we'll celebrate great work that's done. We'll develop excellence reporting systems so you can thank each other when you see your peers and your colleagues uh, do some great work. And as a special thank you, linked to the 70th birthday of the NHS, I want to recognise all the great work that you do as our staff. And I want to recognise that by giving each and every one of our staff their birthday as an extra annual leave day over the coming year to say a big thank you and to recognise the great work that you do. So I'm incredibly proud to be part of the NHS this week. It really is an opportunity to reflect and to celebrate the great work of the NHS. But I'm also increasingly determined and excited about the future we have here at Frimley Health. So just think about what's been achieved here in Frimley Health over the last 70 years. Heatherwood Hospital was a children's orthopaedic hospital as I understand it and will now be a state-of-the-art elective facility into the future. Wexham Park was pioneering some fantastic plastic surgery services in the 60s and 70s and continues to grow even now. Frimley Park, one of the first uh, MOD medical units and indeed the first in the NHS to be rated outstanding with the Care Quality Commission and still developing services today. We now see and treat over 900,000 outpatients each and every year. We see a quarter of a million in e attendances and over 100,000 planned operations. Just phenomenal improvements over the last 70 years here in the NHS. So thank you for listening. Please make sure you celebrate being a part of the NHS in this fantastic period, but also celebrate being a part of Frimley Health. And let's be excited about our future, our future to be outstanding, outstanding now, outstanding in 10 years and outstanding in 70 years time. Thank you.